What I don't want you to know about me is that for the last several days, I've been out of commission. I've been exhausted, actually. And this has come after leading some sessions around racism in our global context, specifically brought about because of the killing of George Floyd. This has come after sharing a hour and a half long video where entitled, I'm an angry black man. This one's for me. It's available on YouTube, it's available on my platforms. And it's one of the riskiest things that I've done in, in a very long time. And after that outpouring, well, actually there was two elements. And during Racism 20, we had an open forum. We had over 30 participants come. And during that time, I was holding space. It was a place of holding space for others. And I left there feeling drained, but knowing that great work had been done. Then there was an outpouring of what was true for me. And the reason that that was exhausting was mainly because there was an element of having to confront the things that were real for me and confront it in a public way to know that this was my opportunity to free myself and to but free myself of the fears that had kept me from speaking honestly and candidly with you and others. And then in the spirit of being angry and seeing what that might offer, spend more time, spend more time on Twitter, spend more time on Facebook, just watching videos of uh, brutality of just humans letting me down um, and finding myself wanting to educate myself more and to see more and to make sure that I wasn't turning a blind eye to everything that's going on right now. And honestly, I was, I am angry, but I was a special kind of angry. I was, I was furious. Ooh, that's a new word for me. I haven't really thought about that. Furious as a way of anger. And it was draining. I didn't make another video. I really, I couldn't really even like, I had all these like, plans that I was, of things I was going to do. And I had really was just caught in just being exhausted. And it dawned on me a few days later that this was due to two major things. The first one, I mean, actually just at the end of the day, it was due to, it was due to me not cultivating my energy. Actually, there's still two major things. The first one is me not cultivating my energy. When I say cultivating my energy, this is not, I don't go through life expecting the energy around me to just come. I take time to meditate in the morning, to I practice qigong. I find different ways to actually bring energy into my into my system, my nervous system, because I'm expending it as I go out and step into areas that are uncomfortable for me. I like to for my leadership style. I like to be having difficult and you know dangerous, risky conversations on a regular basis. Have deep, meaningful conversations and life changing conversations. It doesn't just happen. Uh, I just, it's an expenditure, it's an expenditure of energy. And what I realized was that I hadn't really, I hadn't been doing that. I hadn't been doing my practice of meditation. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't, I haven't been surrounded by other people. I'm an extrovert. And so there was no extra energy coming from others. And I was just running on fumes. And it's when I realized that, I started to make some small changes, brought in the meditation practice. Actually now I'm finding time to just even just do five minutes at various times in the day because making sure that that energy is in the right places and is of highest and that most priority. I went for a walk, I went for a walk and during that walk, I put on music that made me dance. In the midst of all this, I put on music that made me dance. I was, my arms were in the air. I was shaking my booty and I, I've learned that if my booty isn't shaken, then I'm not actually dancing. And it's, and I could feel the energy coming back. I can feel myself re-entering into conversations. And I bring this up because when it comes to 
really making change, when it comes to shaping the next era of humanity, we're taking something and we're, we're, we're creating, we're birthing something new in the world. And it takes energy to make that come to life. I just want to make sure that I'm calling out for myself even, just being real about the process of cultivating the energy along the way. And there's another thing that is tied to this, and that's the energy that I was using wasn't the most, I'm, I'm going to call it like the most clean and pure for me. Uh, the way I would describe it, it's, al it's almost like using, sh taking like a sugar rush to try and like sustain you through something as opposed to having like healthy, nutritious foods that have a, a, the right source of sustainable energy for you. It was, that was burns cleaner. And the energy source that I was using at that time was anger. And the anger, like it was like in that furious anger, the anger was in trying to watch more videos and just say like, and just to feel more indignant along the way. Wow, this is really fun. I'm, I'm growing in my language around, uh, around the anger spectrum. But it was fueled by that anger. And the, there was a helplessness. It's like, what can I do about it? There was a powerlessness. Again, what can I do about it? There's also a powerlessness in the sense of, well, what I want to do may not be the right thing. What I want to do might be a distraction. What I want to do, uh, what I feel I can do may not even be helpful or it might be a distraction. And there was this pent up anger that was trying to find a way to, to, to get out into the world. And it didn't dawn on me until after I had gone through the part, the practice of recultivating my energy. I knew I needed the energy to sustain. I'm like, if we're going to really make change, it, is, it does not happen in two weeks. There's some great, there's some great wins that, that can happen, but the overall systemic change issues are still with us. And as my energy re started returning to me, it gave me a bit of chance to see, like, actually to, to see myself again and to remember something, to remember that when I get angry, the, I create. When I get angry, I turn to joy. I, when I get angry, I turn to conversations and I bring people together and I get closer. And that's the way that my anger really, that's a sustainable energy source for me. Because I'm always angry. And so I'm always trying to create and bring people together. And it's really important here because I, I do want to make that distinction. I don't want to call out anger as a bad thing. I'm actually like happy to stay angry. And I'm taking the time to find a sustainable way to transmute that anger into what serves me. So I wanted to bring this up. I just wanted for this distinction here, I just wanted to just be real with you and to share exactly what I'm going through and how I'm navigating this here so that you might be able to take something for yourself through it. This is not, this is an opportunity here for me to just be with you in this moment and to bear myself in a way that is just real with you. Cultivating your energy and using anger as an energy source. Two really important places to see what is, how are you cultivating and what is the fuel that you're burning? I'm curious for you. Uh, this one's, I'd like to leave these with a, something you can do in the next 24 hours. And for me right here, I think that the biggest thing is just, what's your biggest insight from this distinction? How, what's one thing that applies to you as a result of this in, distinction? And then let me know. Come give me a comment. Let, let's share that with me. And if you're looking to explore your energy and how you can continue to cultivate your energy as a leader, or what is the, the unique manifestation that allows your anger, your rage, your sadness, your disgust, your happiness, your joy, whatever your emotion is, what's that unique manifestation that allows it to come to life in a sustainable way, that in a sustainable and almost like self, uh, self-fulfilling self Way. I'm, I don't know if I'm framing that the right uh, in the right context, but what's that 
self-sustaining way of allowing your energy out into the world. For me, it's in making conversations and bringing people closer. For you, it might have a completely different way of looking. And I want to make sure we give that space to. And if you're interested in exploring and finding out what that is for you, then you should come and join us in our Trailblazer tribe, where you got to work with me directly and with other Trailblazers who are really going through the pr process of becoming more of who they are so they can take on the world and help create something quite magical, create their vision of what the world would look like. If that sounds good to you, go to niyamashang.com slash tribe and come join us and come participate in an upcoming tribe experience. All right, I got your back. We got this. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video, or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.